catch up with uh, Coalition Senator James Patterson, talk up, talk about uh, the latest developments uh, when it comes to the China relationship. Thanks for joining us, uh, uh, James. Uh, good to talk to you again uh, from the, the happy state of Victoria, which seems a lot more enamoured with China than the federal government. Well, I don't know about the state of Victoria, but certainly the state government of Victoria, and I'm not sure they're in line with the people of Victoria on that question. But yes, there's no question. Uh, the Andrews government uh, is developing a very cosy and I think compromised relationship with the Chinese Communist Party that started with the signing of the Belt and Road Initiative and has culminated this week in the Treasurer of Victoria, Tim Pallas, effectively running lines on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party, running their propaganda uh, and dividing Australia while we're engaged in a what is becoming quite obviously a trade dispute in China. Yeah, this is quite extraordinary. I've highlighted that uh, those comments from Tim Pallas a couple of times. But this is not a partisan issue. This is surely an issue about the national interest. I think anybody who looks at what Australia's done here, you can quibble about language or timing all you like, but we've stood up for something sensible globally, uh, an independent investigation. That's been endorsed by most countries on the planet, in the end, even by China. Yet when we are punished for this, Tim Pallas says Australia's in the wrong. He essentially runs Beijing's lines. And just to underscore, Chris, just how bipartisan that is, the Labor Senator for Victoria, Kimberly Kitching, has been one of the most critical of the Andrews government and of Tim Pallas for his comments, for their Belt and Road Initiative policy. Uh, it shouldn't be partisan at all. I mean, what Australia did is what any country should do, which is pursue our national interest, but also happen to line up with the global interest in this instance, which is that... Uh, there should be an inquiry, a genuinely independent, comprehensive inquiry into the origins and the handling of the coronavirus, uh, where it originated in Wuhan in China, uh, the organisations responsible for responding to it, including the Chinese Communist Party and the World Health Organisation, uh, and that it appears that the Chinese government has linked that with other completely, ostensibly unrelated trade issues. You would think that the least we could expect from every politician in Australia was that they would, by default, if Australia is to side, side in that dispute, dispute but not Tim Pallas. Let's talk about the Belt and Road Initiative. Now, uh, China and indeed the Victorian government would say that this is just a lovely way of China helping to invest in transport infrastructure, trading infrastructure around uh, the world, uh, and uh, it's, pure, it's generous and it's sensible. But the Australian national government decided not to get involved because there are strategic aims and objectives in here that further Chinese interests rather than our own. China just plays us off a break. It says, all right, we forget about Canberra, we'll try and pick off a state. Isn't this a problem when you can have state governments essentially undermining national foreign policy? In short, Chris, yes, it is a problem. Uh, the federal government very wisely, in my opinion, has declined to participate in the Belt and Road Initiative. And when other countries in our own backyard, when our friends and allies in the Pacific uh, ask us for our advice about whether they should uh, participate in the Belt and Road Scheme, we uh, tell them to think very carefully about whether it's in their national interest to do so. Uh, there is a litany of examples from ports in Sri Lanka to all across the world and the region where substandard infrastructure has been built uh, at an enormous and uneconomic cost and developing countries have been loaded up with debts that they cannot pay back. It's been likened to debt trap diplomacy where countries who can't pay it back effectively have to hand over assets and, and with it their sovereignty to the Chinese Communist Party. So it's very unhelpful that the Victorian government has signed uh, onto this and when other countries in the region are considering whether they'd like to, they on the one hand can see the federal government has not signed up, up to it, but on the other hand they can see the Victorian government has and that would cause at the very least some doubt in their minds about whether they should participate. Well, just briefly before you, we let you go, we'll talk about what China's aim is here. I'm just going to show a cartoon here that's going to appear in the Australian newspaper tomorrow by our good friend Johannes Leek. I'm not certain whether you can see it, but they have a map of Australia and they have a, a, red, a red flag, a Chinese flag uh, over, across the state of Victoria breaking away from Australia. And, uh, and they're saying to Xi Jinping, despite the pandering, the pandemic, our island building initiative in southern waters continues unimpeded. Now, that's brilliantly funny and insightful from Johannes Leek. They're trying to break Victoria away from Australia and, and towards uh, China, towards supporting China. Is that, in, in, in very graphic terms, exactly what's going on here? Johannes Leek is a genius, Chris, and his father, Bill, who I knew very little but occasionally would be very proud of him. He brilliantly captures a lot of issues in that one included. And I think on, on this, we should remember that the Chinese Communist Party acts only in its national interest, in its own self-interest, and they're entitled to pursue 
their own national interests as they do. But other governments, the Australian government and the Victorian government, should think very carefully about whether it's in our interest to further their national interests. Sometimes it might be when it's mutually beneficial trade, but other times when it's enhancing their regional stature when it comes to something like the Belt and Road Initiative, I don't think it is. And very clearly, Chris, the Victorian government has no expertise in foreign policy. They should stick to the many issues they've already got on their own plate, uh, like restarting the Victorian economy again, getting kids back in the classroom in Victoria, yep. uh, rather than weighing into things they've got no expertise in understanding yet. Spot on. Thanks so much for joining us, James. Thanks, Chris. Senator James